Welcome back to ADHD Whiskey. My name is Matt. Tonight, we are discussing five whiskeys you shouldn't buy. Gonna be honest. About eight months ago, my friends, Dan and Sean of the Bourbon Junkies, put out a video, and it was called, you guessed it, five whiskeys you shouldn't buy. And they did like 700,000 views. And I was like, I got five whiskeys people shouldn't buy. So here's my list. Now where's my 700,000 views? Sons of bitches. If you don't watch this, then you're prejudiced against fat people. Probably, probably not. When some people watch this video, they're gonna get out their nunchucks and their brass knuckles. And they're gonna come after me. And they're gonna be like, hey, you don't know what you're talking about. And I'm gonna say, it's just my opinion, man. All of these are just my opinion. The first whiskey on my list of five whiskeys you shouldn't buy comes with a caveat. If, if, if you find this whiskey on a shelf at a store for a retail price, then you should buy it. But if you see this whiskey on a shelf for like not retail price, but you just have to have it, or you go on the internet and you like find some guy called William D. Not a scammer and he's selling it for like way over MSRP, you don't buy it. And it's Elmer T. Lee. I'm so sorry. There's so many Buffalo Trace people out there who just love this, but it's just good bourbon. It's nothing special. I got this bottle for $37 and I feel like I paid the proper amount of money for it. Easy to drink, good sipper, nothing special. What a good friend I am. Just telling you to save your money. What a guy. The second whiskey on my list of five whiskeys you shouldn't buy is another whiskey that people are gonna tell me I'm an idiot for, but I can't help it. It's cheap. It's not expensive at all, but dang it, it's not great. People out there want a cheap weeded bourbon and some people love this stuff and they're wrong. That's Rebel Yell 100. It's like 18 bucks or 20 bucks or 24 bucks, something like that, depending on where you live. This is my second bottle, second bottle. It fooled me once. I got home, I opened it, I tried it and I was kind of, kind of impressed. But that's when the love affair stopped. This is one of the whiskeys I've tried that for some reason gets worse the longer it's open. So maybe, maybe if you have to buy one, just bring it to a party with a bunch of friends and just do like rebel yell shots, you friggin' rebel. It squeaks a lot. It's sour. It's not great. It's pretty good. I kinda like it. It was good for a second. And then it turned around and slapped me in the face with its sour puss attitude and taste and just hit me right across the lips. If you wanna pay 18 to 20 bucks for a bourbon, get Fighting Cock. If you wanna pay a little extra, get Old Granddad 114. For some reason, this tickles my fancy in the most unfancy way. And I would say that if you're tempted to pick up a Rebel Yell 100, thinking it's gonna be the bee's knees or the cat's ass, you've got another thing coming, and you should listen to Matt's ass. Number three on my list is also a relatively cheap bourbon. This one is using all the buzzwords that's needed to just market a bourbon to the public that they'll just snatch up and buy, especially at a great price and then immediately have a buyer's remorse. And that's Old Tub. It's a 2020 limited edition from Jim Beam. They used to have this as distillery only, and then they were like, you know how we can make a few extra bucks? Let's call it a limited edition and sell it to the entire United States, even though we could make this bourbon every single day forever, because not that special. It's 100 proof, it's bottled and bond, it's unfiltered for more robust flavor, 
buzzword, big friggin' buzzword. Sour Mash, bottled and bond. Where does it say it? It says limited edition on here somewhere, I know it does. This limited edition bottle is a tribute to that groundbreaking whiskey. Unfiltered, 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 unfiltered. Friggin' yuck. There are people out there who will say, Matt, it's $25. It's $25, what do you expect? I don't know. I honestly don't know. It's probably a $25 whiskey, even though yuck. What gets me is the buzzwords. Like, it's not a limited, you could just make it. S stop. www.drinksmart.com And if you go there, they'll probably tell you that the smartest thing to do if you're drinking is to drink something else. Because this tastes like nut shells. Peanut shells mixed with some sort of furniture store factory building apparatus. Not a huge fan, not ever gonna go back to it, unless of course like apocalypse and I run out of everything else. And in which case I will savor the rest of my old tub minutes before my death because it just might kill me, it's that bad. If you have $25 and you want to buy something from Jim Beam, buy Old Grand Ad 114. It's 114 proof, it's also nutty, but it's delicious and much better than this. Number four, the number four whiskey on my list of whiskeys you should not buy also comes with a caveat because the whiskey that you might buy could be absolutely delicious. It could be a home run. It could be out of this world, it could be amazing, it could be a masterpiece. Unfortunately, the ones I've had have not been great. They've been not good. They've been kind of bad. And that sucks because we all wanted Barrel Proof Old Forester so bad. And they were like, you want it? Here it is. Old Forester single barrels bottled at barrel strength. You should not buy them unless, unless you can try it first and you enjoy it. Let's say, for example, you buy a Knob Creek single barrel or a Russell's Reserve single barrel. You kind of know what you're getting yourself into and they're good no matter what. Some of them are way better than others, but they're all good. These are more expensive. This one was $80 plus tax or $90 plus tax. I can't remember. I think it was like, I think I paid like 90 bucks for it. And it is very not great. It is, I hate to say it, but too hot. I love barrel strength whiskey, as long as it has flavor. This one tastes like not a lot of flavor and a whole heck of a lot of nuclear weaponry after the explosion, ground zero, with your mouth open. Ah, just let me have all that. Ah, it burns real bad. And I've tried, I think, two or three others that have been the same way. And I've heard lots of people say the same thing. These drink hot and they're not all great. Unless you get the opportunity to try it first, don't buy an old Forrester single barrel barrel strength. I feel bad because I had such high hopes, but damn it. That leaves us with the number one whiskey you should not buy. And most of you would probably not buy this anyway. Most of you would probably pass this up but some of you might not, because guess what? America, friggin' America, you're walking through the aisle of your liquor store and you see the red, white, and blue. And in your mind, you think America, liberty, freedom, hells yeah, fireworks, flags, happiness. So you pick up this SOB and it says America small batch bourbon and you bring it home to enjoy. This son of a bitch is like $40. America's finest bourbon. It says so right on the label. Whiskey made with pure American grains. It's 90 proof. It's see-through, I can still see you. Just looking through the bottle. America bourbon whiskey is proudly made in America. I hope, Jesus Jesus. With the finest American grains using a patented revolutionary process to offer you the cleanest, smoothest, and best tasting whiskey you ever had. This whiskey is dedicated to the same pride and craftsmanship that made this country great. Taste the difference in every bottle. Aged a minimum of six months in new oak barrels. 
This is not the best bourbon you will ever taste. This is one of probably the not best bourbons you'll ever taste. It's bad. It's not good. It tastes like sneakers and McYucker. Why on earth would somebody put on the label the cleanest, smoothest, and best tasting whiskey you ever had on the label? Whoever wrote this label must have unintentionally replaced the word worst with best. Let's pretend this is a pair of blue jeans. This bottle represents a pair of blue jeans that I made out of my basement with the stuff I had from around the house. And then I put them into a store and people were like, what the hell is this? And then they looked at the tag and it said, these are the best blue jeans you will ever wear. And then they got them home and they didn't even have legs. They didn't have legs. They were very bad blue jeans.